Welcome to the Random Opening Challenge, a series where I play on multiple accounts where I am forced to play a randomly generated opening. I'm quite casual and careless when it comes to online games, so join me to see how far each opening will advance. Hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to Random Opening Challenge Season 2. I sent out like a quick note asking, you know, what your preference is between streaming and just the video separate. Um, I think the majority still wanted to keep the stream, but I feel like maybe 30-40% wanted to have separate video and streams. Um, I thought it would probably be best to keep it this way. So from now on, ROC is going to go back to the older format where I just record and there's going to be no chat, no distractions. Here we go. Let's select the first opening for today. If I can generate, this is seven, okay. So, um, our opening is, I think it's 3.5. Um, wow, my uh, computer's really lagging. Okay, 4.5, high eye opening. Let's go. And here we go. Found our opponent already. I've actually gotten quite a few wins on this account prior to this. So I've got four wins and I'm uh, 22-0 for the full record. All right. Um, okay, I think I gotta switch my language settings right after this game. Um, okay, so hi, I. Um, it's yeah. I think I mentioned this in first season. I don't really love this move. This like the Joseki here. So we'll see how it goes. Wow, my the first game back and my opponent's already playing a trick move on me. So just remember, if your opponent uh, plays there ever, just uh, Hane. Um, they can't do anything. Whoa, Hunting Descent, okay. So that's interesting. Now, can I cut? Is the question. I'm pretty sure I can. Uh, I hope I'm not like terribly misreading, but it seems difficult for White. Oh, okay, so White's gonna turn. Then, actually, locally, Black is alive after blocking. Um, my clicks are getting actually registering really slow. I hope I, hope I don't run out of time. <laughs> um, okay, so first game back, we've already gotten ourselves into a pretty big fight here. Uh, all right, so what? <laughs> um, that's not a good move. First of all, I can just live by jumping, so I won't have any problems here. But I can get some free center moves before that. I'm actually really tempted to just sacrifice the corner. I think that's not a bad idea. Then I might push again and then another nice move. Huh. This also feels like it's just way too aggressive. White doesn't need to escape this stone. I think it's much better for white to like jump and um, sacrifice as well. Black has very bad shape if black wants to save it anyway, which makes it really not worth it for white to start running this out. It's definitely going to be a pretty bad fight for white already. Okay, so uh, we push here. I really want to get the third line move right here. Okay. Um, I just realized that I, I set up the coordinates in a way that um, it doesn't include I, but if I right click as you see, uh, it's probably really tiny, but um, Fox actually has a feature where if you right click it shows you the coordinates, um, and they have I in their coordinates. <laughs> there, was, there was a big uh, thing about this in season one. Um, it was pretty terrible, like I, <laughs> I completely didn't realize that sometimes there are I in coordinates. Uh, most in some some cord most cordons don't have eyes. I had like a big uh, mind blown moment. But anyway, so if I right click and there is like past I, I'm gonna have to say a different coordinate. That's okay. I think I'll get used to it anyway. So we pretty much got what we want. We pressed white down uh, on the bottom. So one problem for us is that the 
I haven't actually lived the corner, even though I can. I've, I've I actually said for a while that I can, but I haven't actually done that yet. Um, okay. So white's completely just ignoring what's happening in the center. Uh, and I think in a few more moves, we're going to see how white will uh, pay for that. Because now the center is very, very weak. And it's also very heavy. So, um, uh, yeah, white can't just sacrifice it, so it's really heavy. Now, I can chase it both ways. Whoa, white's actually playing tiger zone. Really? Okay. Actually, this is something that um, you guys wanted me to do, right? You wanted to see how to punish these kinds of really aggressive plays. Um, and I guess my top uh, tip is to be patient. You have to be patient. You got to wait for the moment to um, deal the, the final blow, if you know what I mean. Okay, so at this point, if I keep chasing, white might actually protect. So I think it's the safest bet is just to capture the bottom so that all my groups are really, really strong. And now these three stones are just hanging there. So I'm going to let white uh, figure out how to deal with that. I'm not, then I don't even have to think about that. I can just let them uh, find their own way to deal with that. So white probably doesn't want to push that. White wants the tiger's mount directly. The push is a self-liberty reduction. Those are uh, never good. I, I don't think my opponent realizes that I can just jump to make this alive. Yeah, so if white plays um, A18, um, black can just connect here. So, yeah, that will uh, pretty much live this. Alright, so. Gonna play the knight's move. <laughs> I hope you don't uh, get too bothered by the background. We have some uh, people coming in to OIG. Okay, well, is white gonna sacrifice the three stones as well? Because then that's gonna become a very big center, right? Um, okay. I mean, I'm happy with that. Like, I, this is very efficient, right? This is a pretty big center. And if you look around, white's, um, all of white's stones are very low. So it's, it's not like white has any huge territory. Um, it's all on the third and second line. So it's all second line territory because white's all on the third line. So this is like 10 points. That's like 10 points. Here, there's probably like 20-something points. But yeah, in general, it's quite small. So I'm not really worried about... Um, white having too much. Energy. I mean, if you just take a look at the center, this is like fit, probably at, at least 60 points. So um, I'm pretty comfortable here. Um, so this is actually a very important point. If you're playing like an unusual game like this, where one side has a lot of center territory, the other side has all smaller bits, you have to do some estimate because it's impossible to tell just by looking at the board and you shouldn't commit yourself to doing that because you're definitely going to make a mistake so just make sure you're not uh, doing that okay so um, okay so white's going to cut there um, now white's probably going to that's probably a ladder break. Okay, um, I should have thought a little bit more about that before. Yeah, so this is a ladder breaker. Um, and now I can escape. Yeah, so I can't escape. Um, but this doesn't look like a good move. So now if I buy a Tori, Tori, Tori. Okay, um, it's probably best for me to capture now because this escape is actually very severe. My groups on the right side are very weak, but this Hane isn't really doing much. Uh, I don't think white can actually live in the center. That's the that's the main reason why I captured. It's actually very difficult for white to make a group alive in the center. And even if white does, I can bully the corner. I can you know get I got the Hane already, so I think 
either way, I'm also going to be very comfortable here. Uh, and there's no way out because this is super strong. I can just like extend if white pushes. Um, yeah, so my goal right now is just to make white live with two points. Um, should I save this? Um, yeah, might as well, right? Uh, there's no cut here, so I don't know why white is cutting here. So this is a very common to Suji. You can push and descend, and that threatens the uh, throw-in. So wait, I can just play on the outside, right? Or I can I can attach, but that might be a bit greedy. Uh, okay, so there's there's no cut here. But actually, if I spend a move in the middle, that actually completely. Oh no, it doesn't completely take away the eye. Okay. So I'm gonna have to attach to completely take away the eye. Okay, let's go with the attachment. If I diagonal, white can actually play this move to make the eye. So right now, eye space is the most important. So, oh, now I can, now I should be able to play here, no problem. Yeah, I can just diagonal now. And there's no eyes in, the, in this area. There's not gonna be another eye in, well, there maximum another eye. Okay, now I can just like pull back, right? Um, there's just no way that this group will live now. Um, but like I said, even even if it lives, black is still just most definitely ahead. The corner, left, the bottom left corner can live. I can gain at least like 15, probably not 15, but at least 10 points up here. White has like very tiny corner. So in all, this is uh, definitely black has a very strong initiative here. Just getting what black can invading the bottom right and then living the bottom left corner. That would have that would have been my plan if white were to live in the center. But now I don't have to do that because uh, there's just no end right now for white to make two eyes. Um, okay, so there's actually just a goate eye over here as well. Um, this is an example in which um, high, like, I guess you can say five dan is high dan, right? These high dan players are just not reading. Like, you, you have, all you have to do is look for two moves. And that's, it kind of goes back to what I'd say, I'd say a lot about habits. If you don't read enough during your games, you're never going to win, right? You're just going to die. Um, and, you know, the reason why um, people do that is because, you know, sometimes you just forget because the game is really complicated. You're paying attention to all these things, but some things you just have to hardwire into your brain, like always read, always, you know, do a certain set of protocols. All right, so pretty smooth finish. Let's roll the next opening. Um, oh, that's our YouTube channel page. Let me uh, go to the random opening generator tab. All right, so, um, all right, here we go. Unorthodox opening. This is probably going to be my favorite account for quite some time. Uh, I'm just honestly curious how well this opening can actually be. Um, okay, so I'm gonna have to play the Tengen. I'm yeah, just generally really really curious how this will go. Um, who knows, right? <laughs> just the just the uncertainty factor and also like the creativity with this opening. I probably have to come up with so many different things just to use the Tengen Stone. Um, and, and I think that in itself is very interesting. Um, so my opponent actually decided to follow up with the Knight's move here. I'm going to try to bother this, I don't know, either, either group a little bit more. Um, either way, I have to fight uh, with this kind of opening. Uh, I think I want to pincer first. I don't want black to do another extension. Black would be too comfortable there. Um, okay, now what to do? <clears throat> so, yeah, we're gonna have to be a little bit more creative here. Like jumping. Uh, so I think it feels a little too safe. You know, let's cap first. If they try to break through this way, then I will jump. Um, because jumping sort of it, it gives it gives black that move and I don't really want to do that. So I'm gonna jump now. 
because I've already made that exchange. If black goes in the middle now, I can I can uh, press this group down. I don't think I can kill it, but I can make it uncomfortable at least. And if black does respond on the bottom, then they've already attached, right? And then I so I can just honey this way. Um. Okay, so that was that's that's my plan. Um, and it looks like yeah, my opponent's actually taking some time. Okay, they they pulled back. Um, if I go down right now, they can actually peep and then attach. Oh, I don't think I can defend very well. Actually, you know what? Maybe I can. Hmm. It's very complicated though, but it looks like I can manage. Hmm. Maybe it's a little too complicated. So it's a hard decision, but I guess I'll just play a regular knight's move. Yeah, the large knight's move, I was thinking if they peep and honey, I could honey to the left. So at age 16. I wonder how that would go. Hmm. So well, we'll see how we'll see how this goes, because we've already chosen this. Um, since black pulled back, my center is a little weird. <laughs> it's not in the very, it's not in the best state. Uh, so we're gonna have to deal with that later. But right now, black has to answer to our move first. Whoa. <clears throat> it looks like they are unsatisfied with just playing a knight's move. So they're trying to. Um, they're trying to break through our shape here. Uh, I can't block because they're going to wedge, and I can't lose those two stones. So I'm going to have to play the Tiger's Knob first. Um, wow, I have pretty bad shape. <laughs> okay, this is not the best shape. Huh. Caught directly. So my first think here. My first thinking here is it's probably not the best move because uh, now I can just... What? Okay, now that is definitely an overplay. That is like an extreme overplay. Uh, how is Black going to capture my stones in the center? Because this group is dead and there is no way for Black to capture White in the center. Well, it looks like my opponent just lost the game in one move there. If they if they just instead of the cut, they just honed on under. Um, I would have to figure out a way to deal with this cut, right? And I and I can't honey because then they could cut and cut again. So that's why I said my group was very awkward because um, there wasn't an easy way to protect it, right? Now this is just dead, so uh, there's no reason for me not to kill it, right? Um, there's like a little bit of energy, and actually black definitely blocked on the wrong side here. Uh, so I can just... Okay, yeah. There's just, I, can, I, I can just play the living move. There's no reason to play the, the, the bamboo here. So I can just play the move to live. This is, this is a very classic shape. Um, you always play the diagonal. If black plays 2-2, two, two, white can block, and this is a life. It's a very common, commonly seen shape, so it's a good, good one to remember. Um, yeah, so black jumps, white can just block. There's nothing special about this. And the, pushing, the, the push here just doesn't work. And the corner is in a life shape, so white is okay here. Um, yeah, so with the help of this stone right here at G11, White can escape with any move that black plays. Um, let me just diagonal this. Is it better to push or diagonal? Maybe I can push here first. <laughs> That's that looks a little strange, but I think that all that that works. I can just push and attach as well. There's actually a lot of ways for white to escape. Um, yeah, I think it's probably better to push and attach because I don't want black to get too strong here. Okay, 
So if block extends, um, I'm going to have to answer in the middle. Then the question is, what can black do on the bottom? Um, so let's take a look at the liberties. There's really not that many, actually. <laughs> There's barely, black barely has any liberties. So this one, I think I can just extend. Okay. This is interesting. My opponent is a pretty good reader. Like I can, I can definitely uh, tell that my opponent is reading a lot of variations in, in along the way. <clears throat> so I do have to answer in the middle. It's probably better for me to answer here because it makes the best shape. And on the bottom, white black can jump down anyway, so it's not a it's not a big deal. Yeah, so if, even if I extend, black can jump down. So it's better for me to just play the best shape in the center. Uh, how many liberties does black have? My instinct is definitely not enough. Um, if white makes the Atari block it to that, so it's one, two, three, four, five, and white has six. Okay, so I actually only win by one liberty. Um, is that right? Can I throw in? No, throwing probably doesn't even help. Okay, yeah, so white actually only wins by one liberty. I kind of, uh, yeah, I definitely overestimated my uh, liberties, but good thing I didn't overestimate by too much, because if I if I lost here, that would have been uh, a very bad result for white instead, right? So even though black died here, black got the Hane, and black lived this group. So also black enclosed in Sente. So uh, if you really think about it, it's not that good for white. It's definitely better for white, but we're de we're, we haven't won the game uh, for sure. So we got, we got a wedge here. Always remember to wedge in this kind of shape, because when they Atari, you connect. The Atari is Sente, so it's a little bit better. Also, I want black to Atari, because then I get the stone on the outside. So that's the, uh, that's the slight benefit here. Um, and I don't think it's really worth that. Okay, so if black Atari's and then reduces. If black reduces again, I can connect. So this move is Gote. Okay, so Gote confirmed. Then I can extend this out. Yeah, you definitely don't want to play Gote moves. Um, this is the mistake. Black self-reduced to Liberty here, which made it... Um, so black lost the liberty there. Why is black throwing in? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Um, it's not like black needs this move, right? If black plays here, white can extend out. That's a pretty bad exchange as well. So this move doesn't make any sense to me. They might be trying to get something... I don't know. I don't know what they're trying to do here. So, okay, so if black reduces, then I do have to respond because they have an eye already. Yeah, so now each move is sente. That's that's no problem. And it's it shouldn't be a difficult read, right? This is this is a, a goate move. In a game, you really don't want to play this kind of moves because they they're they're just generally you know I mean this is obviously too small right and it's not a mistake that you can't avoid uh, so yeah <laughs> wow okay well my my opponents are are kind of quick th today so we might be able to get some extra games here for for this first episode so the story of this had really just got to be this diagonal I mean before the game wasn't really that bad and so before this so two two mistakes the first is the connection here if black plays uh, the diagonal directly. Um, white only wins by one liberty, so black can actually just capture this, invade. White would probably have to extend. Another strategy for black is to play the tiger's mouth and then expand the lower right. Um, and I think both of those would be pretty good. It's still a very long game. I mean, this die, but it's like 30 points. Black can build something here. It's better for white, but it's not finished for sure. I mean, after the two mistakes here, this is definitely finished because white got this move. There's this tiger's mouth uh, is not even sent anymore because white got the Atari. Right? And this group is also in danger. So all of a sudden the, the game collapsed. Okay, let's roll the next opening.
Uh, let's see. Okay, we're getting large numbers today. Um, four six. This account was the account I was most nervous about, but it seems to catch a lot of people off guard because when I play four six, they just automatically play the star point. <laughs> so um, I've actually got eight wins on this account. I think it's probably one of the one um, one of the definitely on on the top one of the top accounts with wins in terms of wins. So that's very interesting. <laughs> Why is white attaching? <laughs> okay, well that's that's interesting. So what? <laughs> what? I've never seen that before. Uh, white is attached. Okay, well I'm happy with this because I just captured the stone. <clears throat> this is barely a sacrifice since the left side is completely empty and white doesn't really have good shape here. So already a very good result for black. Um, actually, if you like, if you, if I play this in an actual pro game, I would be pretty comfortable winning already. Like if I, this would obviously would not would not happen. But if I had this position with a pro, I'd I'd be really confident that I would win the game already. So um, that kind of gives you an idea of like how bad this is for white. I mean, if black just captured this. It's black is super strong. This wall isn't really all that useful because there's like a peep here. And even if, like, if you think about it, if black has, like, a close pincer, white's not even alive yet, so um, white's not that strong at all. Uh, I think it's possible for me to play... I should probably re... <laughs> I should probably think hard about it. Okay. Uh, let's not go, like, super aggressive. Um, it doesn't really... You know, it takes a lot of reading to do moves like th this and it's generally just it, like I would say it's 80% wouldn't work so yeah I didn't I'm not doing that okay so huh. there's can I do something on the bottom Well, I guess it's not really urgent because White's not really going to play the diagonal anyway. Um, I might as well just defend my corner first. Because it actually goes quite well with this thickness. If White diagonals, um, I can attach and pull back. Uh, so I don't think it's a big deal. So I'm going to just approach now and uh, take the big points first. Always play fast moves in the opening. Uh, one of the most important opening strategies. Now I can invade later here so maybe it is worth worth it to do something. Maybe I'll attach and see whether my opponent uh, captures me or not. White can capture the stone because white can do this big-headed ghost in the corner. If you don't know what I'm talking about don't worry about it. Um, okay so I pulled... Uh, I don't really want to pull this back actually. Okay the attachment is probably not that good. Because white descends, white is actually all alive, and I'm I still have a weakness. No, now I have to commit to doing some invasion and try to connect back, because otherwise I'm gonna have to constantly worry about this diagonal. This diagonal splits the two groups, and it's definitely not a comfortable situation to be in. Another attach and cut. My opponent loves the attach and cross cut. Um, okay, so if I extend now, they connect, I can still capture the stone. Um, another option, I can just Atari and Tiger Smoke, and I just connect back. Okay, that's, prob that's probably better, because my original goal was to protect this diagonal. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, and then just connect back to the right side. So in terms of opening, um, the right side I think is probably similar, but I feel really good about the bottom left variation. So I'm actually very optimistic already about the game. Oh, I can extend. Okay. I I missed right there. 
Yep, I can't actually escape. If I escape, they're going to extend. Is that it? Can I turn? Okay, when they turn... Yeah, it doesn't look like I have a good move. Okay. Well, I made a, I made a mistake there. I... Uh, I thought I I thought they couldn't have laddered this. Maybe this does the ladder just work? Oh my god. What am I? What am I even doing? The ladder just works. Oh god. <laughs> okay, typical Ryan. Misread ladders. Okay. Let's just swiftly move on and pretend that never happened. Okay, so I'm gonna diagonal. This is a big move. They can attack, but I can I think I can deal with that. Okay, well, I just blocked here, so it's probably not that efficient. I want to expand this left side a little bit. Is this the wrong direction? Maybe this is not as urgent. Yeah, okay. I probably should have dealt with the right side first because the right side is weaker and it's more empty. Also, if white invades, white's not doing anything to black, so... Uh, this is what I usually like to think about as like open territory. It's always going to be black's territory. If white reduces, white doesn't actually gain anything back. If white invades on the right side, white is actually pressuring the corner. White's actually you know threatening this diagonal. Um, so it's not just open territory. Huh. At this attachment, I expected the three three, but um, wonder what my opponent's trying to do here. Oh, that's definitely not very good because I can just connect. And are they going to escape this? Hmm. Okay, my descend was probably played too quickly. Uh, if I extend, they're gonna Hane, and this variation is a little uncertain. Um, this one in the game, like, I know for sure that, you know, white's probably just not very good. So, also I have this invasion. These three stones are very, they're very awkward. Uh, they're pretty heavy. White can't just sacrifice, and white can't really just close my groups either yeah and look at this shape it's a it's such a it's such an awesome shape for white right white's gonna have to turn um okay so having already benefited from the shape what should i do now okay so i can there's actually a couple things i can do i can attack the white the, the four white stones here. Um, or I can actually attach under. And I can net in the middle. Uh, I'm kind of leaning towards that variation. Yeah, let's attach under and net in the middle. I don't really want white to connect back, so I don't really want to just push this way because that's just going to let white connect two weak groups. Um, and that wouldn't be very good for black. So I can actually cut and descend. And if white wants to capture this, white's going to have to connect under. And... Black just gets many Ataris in the middle. Oh, this is this is a very good result for Black. Yeah. So yeah, when basically whenever you make like really awkward shape like this, it's it's never gonna be good. So I can even Hane. I don't even have to let White connect back because so if they Atari, I can just capture. It's not a big deal. And huh? <laughs> um. I don't know what that was, but... <laughs> yeah, so if they Atari, I can just capture. If they Atari, I can just extend, right? It's not a big deal. They have to protect this anyway, and then I can just capture back. So I'm getting all the territory. And on top of that, white's still very weak in the center. I think there's a, there's a big point um, over here in this top right result. 
uh, never make <laughs> never make shapes like this. They are just generally gonna get you in trouble. Uh, yeah, I think I want to play like a a knight's move here because I didn't. I don't want. If I jumped, why well, can I actually extend and not answer my move? Um, so I I just yeah I didn't want to end up in go take here so. Yeah, this top right is just way too good for black. So black can just play very safe moves at this point and and win pretty easily. Okay, so I can actually just play this move to be safe. If I cut white my Atari and Tiger Small, then capture my three stones. But if I play here, white just doesn't have anything to do. I can just connect back. All white is doing is like capturing that one stone. And actually after this, when I descend, that's Sente. So white really didn't gain much. I can't, I'm really tempted to play that, but I think I should jump. And then I, I'm still threatening invasions. Now this invasion is going to be pretty severe. Um, yep. So now we're just rolling a snowball. It's, uh, you know, black is ahead. White is playing slow moves. Um, even when white is behind, so black is just going to keep increasing the lead. And yeah, now they're going to, uh, my opponent's going to play very uh, aggressive moves here, which I don't really mind because I'm not really committed to making a lot of territory on the left side. I don't really care if that gets invaded because I'm getting compensated more than I am losing because I can just keep invading white. And all of white groups are weak. Black has more territory and are stronger, have stronger groups. <clears throat> I can actually extend first before haunting back. Let me go just haunting back. <clears throat> okay, and so if white tigers, if white doesn't answer, black can actually wedge. Um, that looks very severe. I think white's just gonna die uh, on top on the top now. Yeah. I don't think white realized how how weak this upper group was, and this is a, like a prime example of of what happens when when you just have weak groups everywhere and you still play aggressive moves. So yeah, when if your opponent is good at using thickness, it's generally not a good idea to play like this. When all your groups are weak, it's actually really, really easy to handle uh, a winning game. And I love playing games like this. Like if, you have, if you have strong groups, you just keep bothering your opponent's shapes, and eventually they collapse. So actually right here... Oh, white descends. Uh, white descending is Sante. Um, oh, but white connected, so this is dead. But if white descends in Sante... White could have white could have made the co and then then I couldn't have connected to as a self co threat. If this descend was not sente, I believe I could have connected as well to make the co a bit lighter. Okay, I'm probably rambling on something that's completely unimportant detail, but um, yeah, now white's dead. So if um, yeah, I can I can just pull back. So yeah, we see this to, to Suji again. We saw this earlier in the first game. Um, a very common to Suji. Oh wait, is it? A... No, it's not a co. It's not a co. I can push. For... Yeah, it's not. It's not, it's not even close to a co. I thought maybe White could play here, but that's still not in the buy space. Wait, hold on. It is. It is. Oh, that was a bit of a strange fox feature. I'm not sure if it, that is, it's a mini glitch, but the story of this game really have to be the upper right, because remember, when white made this really weird shape, black was able to take advantage of how bad it was to gain a lot. So generally, you just don't want to make that good shape. I think probably a much better way for white to do is make this Atari, because here, if black connects, the liberty shortage issue continues. So basically, white is connected. So black probably just wants to capture. And then white can escape here. So 
it's arguable what Black is gaining here. Black probably has to do another invasion to continue because Black just jump, jumps out and does this. Black doesn't really gain much. White just protects all the groups. It's still a very long game, very close. Um, yeah, so this is a very big mistake by White. Um, even if White jumps here, this is definitely way better for Black already. And so at the very end of the game there, I was thinking about this and I didn't, <laughs> I didn't realize this just makes Ko, like, it was like a mind-blowing blowing moment for me because I completely didn't realize that if Black Atari is here, White can play this move. Um, and we're fighting this Ko, right? If Black goes here, White captures. There's still another eye there, so no matter what, it will actually be a Ko. Uh, for some reason, I thought it was just completely dead. That was, that was why I had that really mind-blowing moment there. Um, it doesn't really affect the result of the game. It was just like a mini... Uh, thing that I, I made a, min, a small mistake there near the end. Okay, so I think that's going to be it for today's video. Played three games, all of them are were really fun. Um, let's roll the opening for the next episode, which is going to be... Oh, awesome! Here we go again. We're going to start off the next episode with the unorthodox. Thank you for watching our video today. I hope you all enjoyed it, and if you did, consider giving us a like and subscribe to our channel as we post Go videos every single week. Also, join our channel to tune into high quality, professional Go lectures every Wednesday. Details are on our website. See you all next time!